In this lesson, we're going to learn some strategies for putting fractions in order from smallest to largest. The fractions that we're going to use from this lesson are 1 and 3 fourths. five thirds and let's use nine eighths now what we need to notice right away is that one and three fourths is larger than one because it's a mixed number we see 1 is our whole number, and 3 fourths is the fraction. Let's look at 5 thirds. 5 thirds is an improper fraction. Our whole, we have 3 pieces in our whole, but we have, our numerator tells us, 5 pieces. Therefore, we have more than one whole in 5 thirds as well. 9 eighths. Since our numerator is larger than our denominator in this fraction as well, we know that that is also greater than 1. Our whole is made up of 8 pieces, and we have 9 pieces if we look at our numerator. Now, let's look at these three fractions. Three fractions. And to compare them easier, let's change them all to mixed numbers. 1 and 3 fourths is already a mixed number, but let's look at 5 thirds. Now, we need to find out how many times 3 goes into 5. Well, our denominator is also going to be our divisor. 3 goes into 5 one time equally. 3 times 1 equals 3, and we have 2 left over. That means our mixed number will be 1 with 2 thirds left over. So 5 thirds is equal to 1 and 2 thirds. Let's look at our next improper fraction. 9 eighths. We'll do the same thing. 8 goes into 9 equally one time. That leaves us one left over. Therefore, our fraction for 9 eighths, our mixed number for 9 eighths, rather, would be 1 and 1 eighth. Our denominator stays the same. So now that we can put all three of our fractions as mixed numbers, 5 thirds was changed to 1 and 2 thirds, and 9 eighths was changed to 1 and 1 eighth, we have to now find a common denominator to make our fractions easier to compare. Now our three denominators that we have so far are 4, 3, and 8. We could multiply those three numbers together to get a common denominator, or we could list multiples of each number. I like to list multiples of each number. So let's start with 4. Multiples of 4 are 4. 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. Right away I notice that 24 is a multiple of 3 and 8 as well. So I'm going to use 24 and I'm going to change my three fractions to equivalent fractions with 24 as the denominator. Now, since they all have 
1 as a whole number, 1 and 3 fourths, 1 and 2 thirds, 1 and 1 eighth. I'm going to ignore that whole number of 1 for just a couple minutes. And I'm going to think 3 fourths, if I'm making this an equivalent fraction with 24 as my new denominator, what will my numerator be? Well, we multiply 4 times 6 to get to 24, so we need to be a copycat and do the same thing to our numerator. 3 times 6, 18. So our new fraction would be 1 and 18 over 24 for 1 and 3 fourths. That's 1 and 18 over 24. And I'm going to write that right below 1 and 3 fourths. Let's change 2 thirds to a fraction with a common denominator of 24. I'm going to ignore my 1 because we see that we have 1 as a whole number in each of our mixed numbers. So 2 thirds making this an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 24, we have to think what do we multiply by 3 to get to 24? Well, 3 times 8 equals 24. Well, let's do the same to our numerator. And our new numerator for our equivalent fraction, we multiply 2 times 8, and we'd have 16 over 24. So 1 and 2 thirds is equivalent to 1 and 16 20 fourths. 1 and 16 20 fourths. Now let's look at 1 and 1 eighth. Again we're ignoring our 1 because we have a 1 as a whole number in every one of our mixed numbers. So 1 whoops. One eighth, when turning it into an equivalent fraction, the denominator of 24, we have to do the same thing to our numerator that we did to our denominator. What do we multiply by 8 to get to 24? Or 24 times 8 equals what? Well, we multiplied 8 by 3 to get to 24, so we need to do the same to our numerator. 1 times 3 is 3. So our equivalent fraction to 1 and 1 eighths is 1 and 3 20 fourths. And I'll write that under 1 and 1 eighth. Now that we see that each one of our fractions has the same denominator and the same whole number, we can put them in order just by listing their numerators or by looking at their numerators and listing them in order. So since 1 and 3 fourths, well let's start at 9 eighths. We said 9 eighths is equivalent to 1 and 3 twenty fourths. So that is our smallest. So I'm going to list my fractions in order in this box over here. 9 eighths is our smallest. Let's look at which one has the next largest numerator. 1 and 16 20 fourths was equivalent to 5 thirds. So 5 thirds will come next. 1 and 3 fourths was equivalent to 1 and 18 20 fourths. So 1 and 3 fourths would be our largest fraction. If you were to list the fractions in order by listing your equivalent fractions, that answer would also be acceptable. Remember, if you're listing fractions in order, it first helps 
to have all of the fractions listed as a mixed number if they are written as improper fractions in the first place. And also, use our common denominator strategy and change all of your denominators to the same denominator. That way you're only looking at the numerators while comparing.